Let's create a new character now that we've set up the scene. For this video, we're gonna focus on the third person perspective and create a third person character. Third person characters are useful in addition to kind of the standard third person movement type, but they can also be used by AI agents or in a networked environment. So to get started, let's go to the Tools Opsev Ultimate Character Controller Character Manager. And when the Character Manager opens, you can see a lot of basic options for a new character. There's also a link that shows different example configurations for already created characters. And you can use this if you want to see different types of configurations for different characters. We're gonna go through these fields though, so there's no need to click on the link right now. Um, the first field that we wanna look at is the character field, and this specifies the character model that we want to use. We wanna use the Atlas model that is included with the demo scene. So let me just drag that model in. For the perspective, we want a third person perspective and the movement type should be left as adventure. The adventure movement type has the animations always moving forward, no matter what direction the character is facing. So if, for example, the character is running towards the camera, the character will be rotated facing the camera, playing the forward animation, even if you are pressing S on the keyboard. The animator specifies if the character should have an animator. If the character has a model, then it has to have an animator. Character model one specifies the model that you want associated with the character. A single character can have multiple models associated with it. So we have model one here, we have model two, and this just allows you to switch between models at runtime. It's a pretty cool feature. Any field that is indented underneath the model field is specific to that model. So for example, this humanoid dropdown is for the Atlas model. Atlas is a humanoid, it's not a generic rig, so we're gonna leave that at the default value. Animator controller specifies the animator controller for the Atlas model that we want to use. The demo animator controller is a humanoid animator controller, so this looks good. Item slots specify the locations that the item can be parented to. It can be parented to the left and the right hand, so this looks good. The default values look good, but if we wanted to change that, we can click on adjust slots and adjust or remove or add the values here. Uh, character model two, we're not gonna have. Template character specifies an existing character that we want to copy the settings from. This is an extremely useful feature in allowing you to get up and running really quickly with a new character based on an existing character's fields. We're gonna leave that blank though because we wanna create a new character from scratch. Standard abilities adds the abilities such as jump and fall and slide. So we want to leave that enabled. We're gonna keep AI agent and nav mesh agent disabled because this character is not an AI agent or a nav mesh agent. Nav mesh agent isn't only useful if you're working with an AI agent because it's also useful if you're using the point and click movement type. Items we are gonna leave enabled because we want the character to create items or to be able to carry items. Item collection and item set rule, we'll leave them at their default values. For now, there's another video that goes over what these are used for. Health, Unity IK, Foot Effects, Ragdoll, all those are pretty self-explanatory, but Foot Effects allows you to use the surface system to play different foot effects. So for example, allow you to play a foot step sound effect or a footprint on sand, for example. So after we have set all these values, I'm gonna click build character. And you can see we have a new character created. Let me get that out of the way. Um, we have this Atlas model that is used that we had specified as character model one. And then we also have a few more game objects and components created. So let me go ahead and hit play and we should be able to see the character moving around now. So that looks good. Um, notice that as I'm walking towards the camera, the character is facing forward, playing the forward animation, even though he, I mean, even though I'm pressing S on the keyboard, that this is because of the adventure movement type. If I wanted the character to play a backwards animation, then I would be using the combat movement type. But all that looks good. You'll notice that I am getting a warning and it says that no character has been assigned to the camera controller. It will automatically be assigned. Uh, that warning is completely harmless. It's more just for information. If I wanted to get rid of that warning though, I can just assign the character to the character field in the camera controller. And now when I hit play, we should see that the warning disappears. 
So yeah, that, that looks good now. And that's all that it takes to create a new third-person character.